Hello and a warm welcome to one of the most famous street races in the world, the Macau Grand Prix, which this year celebrates its 50th year. It seems incredible, doesn't it? That back in the mid-60s, they started racing around these narrow streets. And over the years, it's become the ultimate challenge for motorcycle racing. It is, without doubt, the most celebrated racetrack in Asia and has been since the very beginning. Yamaha sent their top rider, Hiroshi Hasegawa, and he duly took the maiden win and followed it up a year later to become the first double winner, beginning more than a decade of Japanese domination. But then came the Europeans, including the entertaining John McDonnell, still the only man to have won the single-seaters, touring cars and bike race here in Macau, and the equally cheerful Mick Grant, winning in the mid-80s when winning here wasn't easy. 84, it was a race between, really between Roger Marshall and myself. Roger was on the three-cylinder Honda and I was on the RG500, the Huron Suzuki bike. Um, I won the first leg fairly easily from Roger and I thought I'd do the, sec the same in the second leg and then Roger must have got out of bed the right side and um, the second lap, he passed me and we, added, we were swapping places for the full race and in actual fact, um, I passed him the last lap and I thought, right, I've got it. And then at the very last corner, he passed me again and I just got him into the line. The reason Mick Grant's win stands out is because it came right in the middle of an era when Ron Haslam went into the record books with a string of six victories. His achievement looked unlikely to be equaled even by the string of TT stars like Hislop and Fogarty who came here and won. Robert Dunlop was another, and so too, Philip McCallum, a winner here in 1996. Yeah, I remember every lap so well, really. You know, I took off the line and I concentrated so hard. You know, the thing is, you've got to keep that up for, you know, 10, 15 laps, whatever the race was, and uh, every corner's got to be right. There's just no room for error. At the end of the 80s, Suzuki sent Grand Prix star Kevin Schwantz to race at Macau. Yet to become a world champion, Schwantz was nevertheless armed with a deadly weapon, one of Grand Prix Racing's unridables, a two-stroke RGV 500 rocket ship which only a few riders could really handle, and not many of those could ride around a street circuit on the back wheel on the way to an unforgettable win. In the late 90s, when Michael Rutter started swapping wins with the road racing elite, first David Jeffries, and then John McInnes, it could have been just another chapter in the history books, especially when Steve Plater won back-to-back -back events in 2006 and 2007. It's great, you know, it's one of those places that to do it when you do a great lap, uh, you get a massive satisfaction because from pretty much from Lisboa all the way through to uh, Melka Hairpin, it's so technical tight. You've got to be very, very accurate, kind of clinical and smooth, which isn't really my style. So I think realistically, I was fighting myself as well as the circuit. Following Plater came triple winner Stuart Easton, but then suddenly Rutter was back. Another pair of wins meaning it's easy to think that the modern era has in large part been dominated by the man with the most wins ever at the gear circuit. Rutter's eight crowns are more likely to be added to than equal. But there are plenty of young pretenders, and Ian Hutchinson launched the most astonishing comeback in motorcycle racing with a fairy tale win in 2013. Stuart Easton followed it with another stunning return. Last year, it was Peter Hickman who covered himself in glory. And this year, who knows? Well, it truly is an incredible 50-year history around this magnificent street circuit. But, of course, everybody wants to win this race, the 50th running of the Macau Grand Prix. Who's it going to be? Let's head to qualifying. Will it be 2015 winner Hickman? He's had a mixed year and he's on an unfamiliar motorcycle. It's a 
jump onto the BMW just for his hard work. You know, that's the first time I've ridden a bike, so um, just steady away from me. Everyone's going to be fast at the end of the day. You know, everyone's been on on the pipe all year, so um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. I'm going to really enjoy it. What about the young pretender? If a newcomer is going to win here, it could easily be the supremely talented and ambitious Glenn Irwin. Um, I'm a racer, I want to I wanna do a good job. Um, at the same time, I'm not going to go out like a hero and do anything stupid, but I have another hour and 45 minutes later, 45 minutes tomorrow, qualifying, half an hour warm-up on Sunday, so co come the 12 lap race, I'm going to have another two hours under my belt, and you know, hopefully we can be uh, close enough to the podium. There's every chance that persistent podium finisher Martin Jessup could make this his year. And Gary Johnson is always in with a shout, any racetrack, any race bike. Always fast, always competitive and on a very fast BMW, Stuart Easton could make it five this year. I've come here in the past and the first time I won I never I never thought I had a hope and uh, hope of winning, you know, and, and uh, came away with that win and then won it again and again and uh, and for a fourth time in 2014. So you never can tell, you know, it's not the kind of place where you want to come and say, I'm coming here to win and, and that's it. Obviously, that's what we're, we are all obviously here for, but you have to just sort of suck it and see really and, and get a feel for it as the sessions go on and, and try not to put too much pressure on and see how it goes. Call him a veteran if you wish, but you can never rule out the greatest road racer of his generation and perhaps several others, John McGuinness. I think it's it's a little bit of a mixture of being fast, being controlling your aggression. It's a long race, it's a tough race, you've got to be fit, you've got to be bike fit, strong, and you've got to be, uh, and, and, and just hit all the apexes, you know, and be confident in yourself. And Because uh, if you don't just hit that spot, you've got no chance. Michael Rutt is another of the old guard, but he's riding like a young blood, and he wants to own this racetrack just as badly as he ever did. It takes you a session or two to get, you know, up to speed, and you're always on the back foot, so luckily I've been riding mine all year, so uh, it's, it's good, but, yeah, you know, the, it, it's, it's a strong team, you know, we've got to just all pull together, and, uh, you know, we've got to try and, with three rides here, we've got to try and win the thing, but uh, there's a lot of people out to get us. But the man with the best credentials in road racing right now is Ian Hutchinson. Obviously, you, you always love to win Macau, and uh, it's such a, an amazing place to get a win at. It'd be great to finish a year like that. But I've had a great year all, all so far, and with a podium every single road race we've finished, so even a podium I'll be happy with. <laughs> so now let's take a closer look at this world-renowned circuit with Philip McCallan. The Macau Grand Prix circuit has to be the most unique road racing in the world. You're sitting on the start and finish line, it's black and yellow, black and yellow, you can't even see the first bend properly. So you start off there, you get through the first bend, then you're into Mandarin, which on the first lap isn't too bad. You get round this boa, it's starting to accelerate now, and we're up San Francisco Hill. We're then on to the back section of the course, and it's left, right, left, right, left, right, hard on the brakes for the hairpin. It's accelerating hard out of the hairpin through Fisherman's Bend. Another one you must get right, hard on the gas after that, into Orr Bend, and it's over the line first. That's a lap of the Macau Grand Prix. Tyres have become increasingly vital in qualifying and racing here, and the top riders all have qualifying rubber available to them, which is why the last 15 minutes of the session is always fraught with activity. The busy racetrack thwarted several efforts, and as we saw riders like Hutchie and Hickman snarled up in traffic looking for some space, people who found a clear path were Gary Johnson, an excellent fourth quickest, and third fastest, a stunning debut from Glenn Irwin, now with a serious chance of making history on this historic day by snatching away victory from the Macau royalty. I said the last lap too on the on the my last hour there. I, I didn't really feel like uh, a lot of energy left. It's it's very demanding here, and I gave everything in that first lap. But they told me it was three tenths up, you know, on on the last lap. But in the middle sector, of the lap, I, I backed off a bit. Um, it was, it's my own fault. It's just effort. Um, it's it's very very hard to 
very hard to maintain uh, the level of aggress you know, aggressiveness around here. Yeah, we've qualified amongst them, and uh, it's just really cool to see them on track. I, I don't get the race where you know Michael and Hutsey and that you know week in week out, and uh, their, their guys when I was growing up, uh, especially Rutter, he was like a, he was a hero to me. So it's cool to be lined up in the front row with him in uh, such a prestigious event. Michael Rutter, normally a master of the well judged qualifying moment, found himself caught up at the very last turn of the all important middle sector of the lap, and the fractions of a second it cost him also cost him pole position. You know, we'd love to be on pole, but you know, fair play to Martin, he's a uh, guy's finger out and uh, done it. You know, we've been doing long race runs trying to get hey, uh, the bike set up to, uh, to work for the race. And, we should have spent probably two qualifiers like everyone else did. I did one, and I didn't do quite a good enough job on it, really. You know, I was about a tenth off my fastest, and I knew I hadn't done it when I gone past. So I thought, there's somebody else in front. I thought, well, that's knackered that. <laughs> Martin Jessup didn't just get an empty track for his lap. He'd been working on this as hard as Rutter, and his pole lap was a proper stunner, a just reward for all his effort and his experience. As we seen last year, a pole position means nothing. It feels good, it feels good today, but when, we, uh, when that flag drops tomorrow, it means nothing. So, um, you know, we set ourselves up for the best possible way to start the race tomorrow. We've been on it all weekend, but, uh, you know, the others are catching. I said from day one, they'll be there, and I think tomorrow it'll be a long, hard battle between half a dozen guys. There are so many big names of the world of road racing, so many previous winners of the Macau Grand Prix listed here that it is sure to be a crackerjack race. Anything could happen and any one of half a dozen people could win on Saturday. Welcome back to the Macau Grand Prix. As you can see, the grid is formed up for the 50th running of the Motorcycle Grand Prix. Martin Jessup wanting to step into the history books, but so too Michael Rutter, who's won this race a man of times, eight in all, and he wants to do more. Glenn Irwin is also on the front row, and the second row is just as strong with the likes of Stuart Easton, who know what this is all about. Steeped in history, who's gonna win the big one? We'll go back to find out with Richard Nichols and Philip McCallum. Right now, the red flag leaves the grid. The red lights come on. We are ready for the start at the 50th Macau Motorcycle Grand Prix is underway. That's it, heading down towards the first right-hander. And the pole man, Martin Jessup, didn't get the start he was looking for. But the old dog, Rudder, got off the line pretty quick there. <laughs> well, you can call him an old dog because he races together. Look who's behind him, though. Tucked in in second place at 67 by of Glenn Irwin. Jessup is in third place. Peter Hickman working his way up through the field. Stuart Easton also on the move there. Those bikes are so distinctive, aren't they? Yeah, well, that's it. We've got uh, two of Team Rutter in the first four at the minute, but Glenn Irwin, who's been a superb newcomer here, he's done the right thing, really. He's got a good start, and he's got him behind the master. I mean, someone with eight wins here, we've got to call him the master. He is absolutely the maestro of this place. The question now is the one that you've raised. How long will Michael Rutter's tyres allow him to ride at this place? How patient will Martin Jessup be before he thinks I've got to get on with this? You can't let uh, a breakaway group develop and not be part of it. But it is Rutter from Irwin, from Mar <laughs> Sorry, Mar Mar Martin Jessup. I'm struggling to say the poor boy's name. I think it's the excitement, Richard. Well, Rutter, he's got the experience, he's got the know-how, and he's probably running on a soft race car there. So he's going to make that work hard for the first few laps here. Uh, he's See gonna... who's in fourth place behind Jessup there, number one. Peter Hickman. Oh, Peter Hickman. Well, if Peter Hickman, to be honest, if Peter Hickman's in there in the first lap and there's a little bit of space, he's not going to worry too much about it because in the theory of the whole thing is the Dunlap will last much longer than the Matchler. Now, that's if they've used the soft Matchler. If they've used the hard Matchler, it will last. Uh, but it'll be a bit slower. It'll be a bit slower. I think, to be honest, Rudder's gone a little bit too fast in the first lap to have a hard car on there. But, but I mean, Glenn Irwin, he's doing a superb job to, to get in there now and, 
And what will happen here, let's not forget, that every lap that Glenn Irwin gets around here, he's going to learn a little bit more. He's going to be a little bit more comfortable. Even during the race? Yeah, definitely. You know, he's only done, what, two hours around this place, and Michael Rudder has done, what, 200 hours. Well, he's going to have to think about it now because he's got Martin Jessup pulling out of the slipstream team alongside him as they run down beside the seawall, turning right on to the start-finish straight. And at the t very top of the picture, that's the bit you want to see, wasn't it? There it is, Jessup still third and Hickman still fourth. And the big gap is behind Peter Hickman, isn't it? Horst Seiger, the, uh, the bouncing Austrian, is the man behind that in fifth place. And it's Gary Johnson and Hutchinson already up from 10th. Connor Cummins, Stuart Easton going down a little bit now. No, I think uh, Martin Jessup's going to get a little bit impatient here because he'll be thinking this young boy is holding me back. And, uh, you know, Martin Jessup, oh, he's, oh, he's hard on the brakes. He watches that. Yeah, he does. We watched him in practice. Like, let's for, not forget, for the last couple of years, Martin Jessup has been pole position here, but he just hasn't managed to get that win. Well, that's so, a good uh, move from, uh, and a very determined move from Martin Jessup. And I'd say Glenn Irwin at this early stage of the race will look at him and go, well, if you want it that badly, you can have it now, but he won't be able to get away with that so easily later. Yeah, no, Glenn will be learning every lap, every lap. He's a racer, let's not forget that. And he's fit. He runs BSB every week. He runs two races at a weekend, sometimes three, so the distance won't be a problem. And uh, the theory of the whole thing as well is that the, the Ducati will be easier on the tyre than the Kawasaki. Let's not forget the, the fight every week in the BSB. Leon Haslam uh, uses a slightly harder tyre on the Kawasaki and Shecky Byrne uses a softer tyre on the Ducati. And, and who's been picking up the most wins? Absolutely. This is the view back underneath the uh, hump on uh, the uh, riders' motorcycle. It's BMW uh, Martin Chesson. That is Glenn Irwin behind him. He's closer than that makes it look. Uh, but I think, uh, although Peter Hickman is close, the gap back from Hickman to Seiger is getting bigger. Um, Michael Rutter is the man going purple in the middle sector uh, of this opening lap. Uh, and now he's setting the pace still. And these guys have got to stay with him. Martin Jessup is doing his best to do that. No, I think everyone, the top fours all, you know, they've all had a pace during practice, so they're all fit to run at that pace. And to be honest, Michael's not away. You know, that's still close. In fact, you know what? If Martin Jessup catches him, he might pull away. Well, Martin Jessup is ferociously quick around here, as we've seen, and he can do those qualifying speeds uh, endlessly, uh, as long as he's got the tyre to do it on. So he'll run at the, uh, the same pace uh, until the tyre gives up on him. And that'll be an interesting thing to see, won't it? Whether this is going to fall into Hickman's lap or not. He's now he's fourth place in three seconds more, or just over two seconds away from the race leader. And he's right on Glen Irwin's back wheel now, and uh, almost sizing up Glen Irwin in the same way that Martin Jessup did a lap earlier. But he's not close enough to do that late breaking stunt because Martin Jessup was alongside by now. And oh, well, uh, you know the last lap proved that they're quickest. Lap the race was Martin Jessup last lap. Uh, Rudder was on a 2.25.5, Glenn Irwin on a 2.26, and Hickman on a 2.25.8. So they're all on the same pace. It, it'll settle down now over the next couple of laps, and uh, everyone will be weighing it up and working what to do. And then the, the, the next strategy will have to come in about lap eight. But I think, to, I think to be honest, Hickman at the back just might be the danger man because. They believe that those Dunlops will last better in the matchers at the end, so it, it's going to be interesting to see. Well, he came on strong at the start. I suppose he knew he had to be with this group in order for that strategy to pay off. So he's done part one of his job, really, hasn't he? He's with the leading group. Yeah, and that was the main thing if he was there. Like, let's not forget about last year. Last year, how far he came up, you know, in the last, from midway on, he just kept chipping away and chipping away. and. Uh, didn't have a problem, but no, I think everyone's riding good here. Rudder sat in the pace. Martin Jessup runs hard behind him, and uh, Glenn Irwin will be learning every lap. He will be fitter. There's no problem there. So uh, it's just as long as he feels happy and comfortable. And he's a mature enough rider to know that look, you know you've got to be comfortable. You've got to be happy if you want to win. Well, a lot of people have put the name Glen Irwin at the top of their list in the paddock sweepstakes, and there are many of them going on. I've had to turn down most of them, so I can only afford to do one. But 
but there's a lot of them with uh, Glen Owen at the top of their sheets, and there's an awful lot of them with Rutter at the top. There's an awful lot with Jess at the top, and there's not many with Peter Hickman's name at the top, and I think they are already beginning to wonder if they've lost their well, stake. I happen to see a copy of that, uh, that little sweep that was going around, and uh, another lad who's well up in the media PR game, and a, and a, and a axe racer with a lot of knowledge and mixes with the guy he put Hickman up from. I'm not going to tell you who it is until later on, because... Well, let me see if I can guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, the, the paddock is full of ex-racers, actually. Not all of them are in the commentary box, unfortunately, but uh, there's a lot of uh, accumulated knowledge and experience from it about here to celebrate this 50th anniversary. And this is developing it into the kind of yeah. race we had hoped, isn't it? Well, there's, uh, there's Peter Hickman now making a little move, so he's happy the tires are working good. I'm glad Irwin to be... To be honest, he's doing good. He's only had two, right, two hours around this track. Those three guys he's with are well, well experienced around here. So Hickman moves up past Glen Irwin into third place. Irwin's with him. Oh, very different line going in there. I think Glen Irwin got a bit overexcited. Yeah, the, the thing about Glenn Irwin, really, to be honest, you know, he's 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 going to be hot on the brakes. You know, if you're out braking or braking with Shecky Byrne every week in the DSB, you know how to use those. So, uh, you know, it is a place. If he had to squeeze it a little harder, I think Glenn could do that. But there's a, a slight space opening up. But to be honest, I don't think we need to worry yet. You know, there's still a lot of laps to go, and uh, a lot of tire wear is going to come into effect later. Well, we'll have a look uh, at the end of this lap and see if this uh, gap between the first two and the second two is changing in any way. It was just over two, two and a bit seconds between fourth place and first place uh, previously, and if it's bigger than that, then we'll know exactly what's going on. And this, uh, while we're watching Glenn Irwin, uh, studying Peter Hickman's form and uh, deciding what he's going to do about it and where perhaps he's going to do something about it. Let's remind ourselves that Horse Cycle is still fifth ahead of Ian Hutchinson, Colin Cummins, Gary Johnson, Stuart Easton uh, and Derek Shields. Not bad for another newcomer in 10th place. You know, Derek Shields, he's a good road racer, we know. He's had a, he's scored a lot of wins this year at home in the National Series, you know. He's beat famous names like the Dunlops in National Road Races this year. So, I mean, we have a strong, strong field out there. Look at John McGuinness sitting at number 11 at, at the minute, Dan Cooper in behind him. So, Rutter leads Jesse into the final corner and out onto the start-finish straight. And we'll see our timing changes as we start the fourth of 12 laps. And uh, Glenn Irwin is, uh, let me see, he is 2.0 seconds away uh, from the race leader, so that's nothing still. No, I think that's nothing here. You know, this is a fast, fast track, and uh, I see these four boys are all fit men. Uh, in, in theory, Glenn Irwin should be the fittest of those. He's the youngest boy there, but uh, you can't beat the experience of runner. But I just think Martin Jessup, you know, he's he's tired. He's fed up finishing second in this race. And I say Hickman, you know, he's still not away. And if Glenn Irwin just hangs in behind Hickman, I think it's really going to be, you know, from lap seven, eight on, where, where tires will come into play and, uh, and stamina as well. In a way, if you can see that gap sort of starting to stretch between Martin Jessup and Peter Hickman. Hickman on the Dunlop, a little bit slower at this point in the race than the uh, Metzler runners, and he's perhaps holding Glenn Irwin up a little bit, as we know how difficult it is to pass here, especially when there's fractions of a second difference between you in lap times. Yeah, I'm just watching Martin Jess up here, and he, he's, he's holding a pretty tight line on that bike. He's turning that bike in wherever he wants. I'm sure that this gap is getting bigger, that uh, Peter Hickman is a little bit further behind Martin Jessup than he was, uh, and that that's taking Glenn Irwin backwards as well. A couple of seconds was the gap there. Let's see if we'll be able to measure it. We catch it up here. As soon as they come out onto the straight, it's just open throttle all the way, virtually. Uh, the speeds are pretty similar. The power delivery is pretty similar. They all, as you keep saying, they all know how to accelerate, don't they? 
no, I think Martin Jessup's uh, playing a good game here, really, because, uh, you know, Michael Rudder, he's experienced. He has the most laps around here. And, uh, you know, if Martin Jessup does manage to sit in there until the last couple of laps, I think that's where it'll become exciting. Uh, it just looks like Hickman's opening a little bit of a gap on Glenn Irwin at the minute. But, like I say, he's young, he's strong, and he's fit, so we'll not worry just yet. If you look at the brakes there, everyone on the brakes is well closing up, so... We're going to have to wait another few laps until we can make predictions. But we did talk about a lot of racers in the paddock and a lot of axe racers. And really, it's between these four boys and Hutchie that everyone has been predicting as a winner. And we did say six winners. Uh, Hutchie has got dropped off a little bit at the start. And he's not been able to pull it back. And, and he's not. He was having a little problems with the bike. The little things just weren't going all the way he wanted in practice where it was going that way for these four boys. And to be honest, when you have a, a bad, a hard, a tough practice, it, it's hard to make that up in a place like this. Well, looking backwards from Martin Jessup's uh, BMW, Peter Hickman should be there, but he's not. So we're pulling away a little bit and Glen Owen a, a dot in the distance. Uh, Jessup still right behind Michael Rutter though, and it's starting to look uh, like a, a two-man race, isn't it? Starting to look very much of is it going to be between those two unless Hickman's tyre brings him back into the equation as the race laps unfold. Six out of 12 is what we're on. So half distance coming up and about now perhaps is when Michael Rutter is going to feel uh, his tyre starting to go away from him, but it'll be fine for him for another couple of laps, maybe three or four. But the last couple of when he's going to really know that going away. I think to be honest, you know, that's pretty that's pretty consistent really there at the minute. Um Rudder is trying hard. Jessup is not going to definitely give up. And don't forget Peter Hickman. We've watched him all year. We've watched him at the TT. We've watched him at the Northwest. He, he just, he hasn't had the road races. Things haven't fell in the way he wanted this year. But he, we know he can ride. He's put in a few superb BSB performances this year. So we'll not give up on him just yet. Martin Jessup, as you can right, rightly say, uh, never gives up. Neither does Michael Rutter. So if Martin Jessup wants to pass, and he definitely does want to pass, then Michael Rutter isn't going to make it easy for him. Rutter tucked down behind the bubble. Jessup out of the slipstream. This is what he wanted. He's already in front. It was that easy for Martin Jessup. That Just corner. a breeze pass. <laughs> The, ma the mandarin, that corner there is so scary. You know, that corner's easy, easy. Oh, Thunder wait a minute, Rutter hasn't given it up either. Michael Rutter on the inside, Jessup with his foot down like Valentino. It's a motocross turn in for Jessup. He keeps it all together, but he's back in second place. And Michael Rutter, as I said, doesn't give up. Yeah, and you know what it's done, though? It's that Peter Hickman get back on the back wheel. Yes, well, all the time they're doing that, so the people yeah. behind them are going to be getting a little bit closer, riding a bit more smoothly and a little bit quicker. Yeah, and to be honest, you know, Rudder's been doing all the work, Jessup's been doing all the work to, to stay there, and uh, Hickman has saved a little bit of energy in closing in now, and if Glenn Irwin gets close, you just never know what's going to happen in the last couple of laps. Well, we said this could be a classic race, uh, and it might well be exactly that for the 50th anniversary you can see michael running a little wide out of some of those turns and martin jessup's holding it in and and that means jessup's quite confident with those tires and if he does have to turn it in somewhere in the last lap he won't be afraid to he's actually riding very very good. he's holding some superb lines there and this this is a course as we know there's no runoff in this course and and glenn Irwin's back on the tail again you know so and the last the last lap to be honest you know runner had a 26 last lap uh jessup had a 25 6 hickman had a 25 7 and glenn Irwin had a 25 6 so them boys are all on the pace and uh, you'll see this possibly possibly slip it down into the 24s well, the lap record set in 2010 was Stuart Easton's, uh, and that's a 2.23, which is an extraordinary performance when you look at how much motorcycles have improved in the past six years and how much tyres have improved in the past six years. Now, Jessup's going to try it again. And I think, to be honest, Jessup, he feels more comfortable. This is, the, you know, the fast the fast section of the course, and this is where he feels he can pass runner. If you watch now, he carries a lot of speed through these turns. Look, he gets the gas on, and that's where he managed to get the slipstream slip stream from the pass. Well, he was alongside at this point before, so... Uh, not going to happen quite the same way, but... I think it will pass. Don't forget we're coming in for the man from here. And uh, that's 150. 
the lead but Rutter is right back at him take that and Jessup back at him take it back again well Michael Rutter that was hard work for Michael Rutter you just saw how determined Michael Rutter is not to come second in this race Michael has had some so superb racing this year so he's fit to ride he can pull the brake and, and maybe he's just having that you know when you've been leading and working hard the whole time you know and someone comes past well that'll be a minute or two just to get a breath back and they uh, line the whole thing up you know, you can see some of those corners. Michael's just run that a little bit wider in, and uh, you never know now. If, you know, Jessup, he might be confident if he can pull, hold them lines and get the gas on, he could possibly open a little bit. You know, he wouldn't have passed there if he didn't think he could pull away. Well, he was quickest in this section in qualifying, and you have to be if you want to be on pole position. He knows how to ride this section uh, when all he's doing is racing the clock, but when he's got this little pack breathing down his neck, the pressure is on, it might not quite be so easy for him. He's just got to concentrate on everything he knows uh, and make it smooth. And in theory, he should be able to ease away from Michael Rutter because he has the ultimate speed. Yeah, no, he's going good and we've watched him in practice. He's just been putting lap in, lap in, lap in, all at a good pace. But look, he's not away yet. There's three strong racers behind him and they ain't gonna give up. Well, it's times like this you think, why is it only 12 laps? Because I could do with 15 of these. Uh, but we're on lap eight out of those 12. And uh, I, I think, to be honest, I've been watching Hickman there, and that's that's his uh, personal best so far in sector two. So, uh, you know, maybe those done laps are starting to work. Well, this is about where we thought that uh, tyres would become an issue. Uh, and we'll wait to see, we'll be able to see it if it happens to uh, Martin Jessup's give you a close-up view of that rear tyre. Glenn Irwin, I think I'm going to uh, stick my neck out a bit here, but if he can stay there, Glenn Irwin could well be the danger man in all of this. He just, he's following them around, watching their lines, seeing what they do. He's close enough, Glenn Irwin, to uh, have a go in the last couple of laps. You don't want to do it on lap eight. The, uh, the only trouble will be here, look, there's Hickman getting ready to move now. And, uh, you know, Hickman's getting comfortable. Look at that. There's never been these bikes just so close into that first turn into Lisboa. Now up France, France <laughs> San Francisco Hill. Jessup on the gas as quickly as he can be. Rutter, Hickman, little gap to Glen Irwin now. And I might just be about to see Glen Irwin drop away from this, and I'll be completely wrong about him. But I, he was so close on that run down towards Lisboa. There's uh, Martin Jessup's view, uh, and you can see how close it is to the wall, almost brushing it with the shoulder of your le leathers. Yeah, I mean, some people do. There's been <laughs> I and you have seen riders in the past with scuffs on the shoulder. Oh, that was Rutter. Right out, wasn't it? Yeah. He's trying hard. He just does not want... He knows if Martin Jessup gets away, he will not catch him again. And Peter Hickman, to be honest, I think he's been, to be honest, I think he thinks Rutter's holding him up a little bit now, so... Uh, Maybe, maybe Michael's tires is going off a little bit. But like until it's over, this race isn't over. And like you said, Glenn Irwin on the back, allegedly that, Dun that Ducati is that little bit easier on tires than the other bikes, so he's on a match where the same as the front two boys. And uh, Peter Hickman, he's on the Dunlap, so... But... Hey, see, Glenn laps. Irwin might be riding very cleverly here. These three are spinning it up in uh, all sorts of places racing each other and glenn owens keeping it cool at the back end of this he might as you say but as you can he might have more rubber left at the end than the other metzler riders he might well do uh, and if that's the case he could be a, a threat to these men but at the moment you've got to say martin Chessup looks like he could be on course for it he's wanted this win for so long we've sometimes sat here with our fingers crossed thinking come on martin this is gonna be your year
I think it's the fast, if we look at the fast sectors, that's, that's the ones where these boys are closing up on Michael, you know, uh, they're just carrying that wee bit more corner speed. And I think this is the lap where Hickman will, will pull, out of this, pull out of the draft into the Lisboa and try to slip it up the inside. He tried to do that before, he's already oh. alongside Michael Rutter. He's outside! Oh, and he is almost through, but Rutter goes to the front, taking oh, advantage no, of that. Slightly. The Rossi style leg, those boys were all breaking hard there. They nearly all oh, oh, there. Comes Lerman. Yes. Oh. Martin Jessup just wasn't ready for that on either side of him. I'd like to see that again in slow motion because he knew he knew that Hickman was coming, but he wasn't expecting to see Michael Rotter pop back into the uh, neither were we really, let's be honest about that. <laughs> I think, to be honest now, he's just lost that little bit of momentum. It's going to be very hard to pull it back. There's only two laps left, so uh, Martin Jessup has got a big job on, but look, he's not going to give up either. Well, here we go then for the final two laps. Rutter, Hickman, Irwin and Jessup are your top four, and the gap back to Connor Cummins it is now in fifth place is about 17 seconds, so this is it and all about it. And Michael Rutter, nine wins. The who'd, who'd say at any point that you could deny him that, and we've been saying that all weekend. Right now is Peter Hickman's the man who stands between him and another entry in the record books. But look, they're all close. Glenn Irwin's there too. They're just going to be squeezing a little bit more. Butter and Hickman almost in each other's wheel tracks. I think Irwin with oh, Jessup's, Jessup starting to look a little bit threatening. Here we are. Let's have a look at this again. I wanted to see this. Hickman goes out to the right, and all of a sudden, Rutter passed Jessup and also he passed Hickman. Stopped him coming back across. Oh, to you know what happened there? It looks like he missed a gear changing down. He was hunting for another gear there, so that just let him run that little bit wide. Wow. You know, when you had a neutral and all the, the engine braking was off the back wheel, that's that's dangerous because sometimes what happens, you manage to get it into first, let the clutch out that locks the back wheel, so he's, he's done well even to stay in fourth place. Well, Michael Rutter did that very cleverly, denying an important piece of racetrack to Peter Hickman, and uh, Hickman had to get out of it in order to make the right turn, so now he'll be anxious to undo that damage and here's his opportunity is this Hickman at the front is this Jessup into third no to Jessup this is one where Hickman look at that the bike just sliding that is a fast I tell you that is the most scariest corner in room race it's not over yet it's definitely not over yet here comes Michael Rutter he's got close enough it's going to be Hickman hanging on to first place and Glenn Irwin still fending off Jessup so Jessup. that worked for Hickman perfectly according to plan this is a sector here now, if, uh, if Hickman's tyres are gripping good, this, this really works the tyre, this is the back third, this is the most technical part of this whole course. You know, if you're confident in the front tyre, you can just run in holding the brake on, scrub the speed off. If you're confident with the back, you can squeeze that little bit more on the way out. So, I mean, don't forget what Hickman done last year. He came through in the last few laps. Well, we're on lap 11 out of 12, so it is almost at the end of the race. There's Martin Jessup has managed to slide past Glenn Irwin, but you mean Glenn Irwin, he has done superb to be here in fourth position, fighting with these boys. Hickman, Rutter, Jessup, one, two, three. Where, where was Glenn Irwin? I saw green behind Michael Rutter. I didn't Richard, see. You think, I forgot, is there any team orders in this team Rutter? <laughs> <laughs> there is. <laughs> There it is, Martin Jessup is in third place. I tell you what, with Martin having pulled that, that distance back, he's going to be in, and let's not forget the fast action seems to be... He is right there. ...where he can uh, make a lot of ground. Well, they've been racing for the first ten laps. Ben Irwin stayed with them, and uh, now they've uh, switched it to Mania. I think Ben Irwin might have an issue here because he's dropped right away, hasn't he? Uh, that's yeah. not just a, a rider who's not happy with his uh, fourth place. He's not happy with his motorbike, I don't think. And that would be a shame. I think Hickman's just opening on that little bit of space on the last lap, is he? But on the, on, the, on the fast section here, you know, and Roderick gets a good drive, Jessup will use his slipstream to pull a little bit back again, but I think it's down into this bow at this time. Of who's going to be best on the brakes? It's very, very hard to pass in the back section so if they don't get passed here it'll be much the same around the third and then it'll be breaking into the hairpin and then 
Walk corner will be the final decider. Jessa is looking very threatening in third. He wants to do this back oh. to these two, doesn't he? But I think they're too quick for him out of that corner. And Rudders coming On back the in the breaks. No, I think Hickman's there safely, isn't he? But that was... Uh, they were so fast out of Mandarin, those two, weren't they? Martin Jessup didn't have a chance. Up the hill for the final time. I think Jessup, he's... He's, he's not going to find this easy. Passing here is just not easy, is it? No, be not at all. Not at all. Unless someone just runs. These boys are all trying fast. I mean, Jessup, he is good round here. We watched him in practice. You know, he was putting constant fast sections in on the back third of this course. But he's trying to and ride round Michael and Rutter. And that's not easy at the best of times. No, no, it's not. And uh, he wants to win so bad here. Let's not forget he's been second and third here for the last, what, five years? He d to be honest, he deserves a win. He does. <laughs> it's very true. We've all been saying it. Everybody wants it. But it would be a very popular win if it happened. Uh, Peter Hickman, uh, the tyre prediction pretty much coming true. But, uh, of course, Peter Hickman can ride a motorcycle as well. He's another one who learns circuits very quickly. So he came here once, did a few laps, came back the next year, won the race. This is his third visit, his second actual race at Macau. And while Jessup looks threatening all over the back of Michael Rutter, he's not going to get past him now. There are only a couple of danger points for Michael Rutter to be aware of. Getting out of this hairpin now is going to be absolutely critical for Michael Rutter. He wants to get away from Jessup on the run down the hill. Yeah, well, the next corner is his... Uh the first break and this is the what the second point before the last where you can get on the brakes he's not close enough to get it there oh rudder spikes twitching around i think jessup was alongside oh. but as they go round the uh, right hand uh, it's still jessup is in it? third he's alongside now they've got the drive out of the cottage on the inside got track position. but rutter keeps second place hickman retains the lead it's going to be peter hickman flags waving as hickey lifts the front wheel over the line Michael Rutter, what a second place that was for Michael Rutter, and what a great third, what another great third for Martin Jessup. I mean, to have a race like that for the full distance in Mackay is just, just absolutely superb. You know, we wondered where's Glenn Irwin at the minute, has he stopped? He's in the pits. Oh, something he has definitely gone had wrong. a problem, yeah. But, uh, I mean, he done well to be in the back of those boys after 10 laps and 11 laps, that's... Uh, He's that, not going to be ashamed of, he can be a proud boy. That could have been a, a very different finish if Glenn Irwin had, in fact, uh, been involved with it. But as we saw, a mechanical issue. And now Peter Hickman uh, riding around the circuit on his back wheel. Confirmation of that amazing top three. Connor Cummins in fourth place, just ahead of the unstoppable horse Saiga. Stuart Easton heads up John McGuinness and Ian Hutchinson. Uh, yeah, hard race, you know. Uh... I was a lot harder than last year, that's for sure. <laughs> no, just um, SMT with Bathams. Put a really good bike underneath me. There's been a bit of talk this weekend. I've not been at the front, but, uh, you know, I've not been a BMW for a year, so it's just taking a little bit of time and understanding the bike. I didn't want to make any mistakes, you know, because you cost for it around here. So uh, just want to say massive thanks to everyone. Um, just they've, they've done a mega job, you know. Just Peter had the better of me. Uh, Last two laps, I really tried to get a good uh, run on to me and a Mandarin, and I got by the side of him, and I thought, shall I go for it? It would have been a risky move, and he could have took us both down the slip road. So I just thought, I'm going to have to try and do it on the last bit coming over there, but it was too fast for me, to be fair. Um, I need uh, to be about 20 years younger, I think. They, they come past next to me on the straight, and I hit a false neutral, and that was it. Let the clutch in, clutch out, tried every gear, nothing. So I went into Lisboa. By this time, Irwin come past me, so I, I pulled over as like to get out of the way of the people, and I was going to stop and try and get my gears, and the gears come back, and that was it. I just got past Glenn up on the uh, up on the road, so and only good enough for third today, unfortunately. Well, the crowd go wild, quite rightly so, because Peter Hickman put on a show, as did all of the riders here for the 50th. It was a vintage, it's what we wanted, and it was a classic way to end this amazing motorcycle Grand Prix. We'll see you next year.